Okay, the only tools you need for woodworking. This is not going to be controversial at all, so let's do it. What's happening everyone? Welcome back to the workshop. Now, in this video, I'm gonna try and answer a question that I get asked a lot. That is, what tools do I need to start woodworking? Now, it's a near impossible question to answer, but we're gonna try in this video. I get asked it a lot, and the latest question I got was from Nick Smith, and he said, uh, can I do a video on um, what tools he's going to need. So he says he's just recently retired, he's moved to the southwest of France, he's currently renovating his workshop, he wants to start out woodworking, making smaller items, and then progress from there, and he just wants to know what tools does he need to get started. And I said to Nick, this is like one of those how long is a piece of string questions. It's going to be different for everybody, it's going to depend on things like how much space you have, what's your budget, and what type of woodworking you want to do. So, in order to answer this question, we're going to have to create a scenario, we're going to have to constrain ourselves to a set of parameters, so it's going to go like this. You have a small space to work in, a garden shed, a corner of a garage, maybe a room in your apartment, you're starting out in woodworking, you want to make some stuff like boxes, some dovetail boxes, some inlay boxes, you want to practice your joints, dovetails, miter dovetails, inlay dovetails, that kind of work, and you're going to work with hand tools. So we limit ourselves to that, to the absolute minimum you will need to make all those things. And I think if we can stick to that kind of scenario, and uh, we should be able to get through this. Now I'm sure there will be loads of comments, and people will say, I couldn't live without this tool or that tool. No problem, comment below, let me know what you guys think, but I'm going to give you more bare minimum tools that you will need to get into woodworking and start making stuff. Now, I'm not a professional woodworker, I'm a hobbyist woodworker. I'm a professional electrician, so take this for what it's worth. This is just my own experience. Tools I use to make all these projects. You don't need a whole lot of tools to get started, so let's jump in and go through it. Okay, in order to get started, we're going to have to create some categories. Now, these are things that we absolutely have to have. There's no way of getting around it, no matter what type of woodworking you're going to do. You're going to have to put tools in each of these categories. And what tools you put into them will be up to you, but we're going to limit ourselves to somebody starting out, like I said, an extremely small space, a very small budget, the absolute minimum. So, category one, marking and measuring. We're going to have to have tools in that category, otherwise we can't mark, measure, we can't be accurate. Second category, preparing and dimensioning timber. If we can't do that, then we can't take any board and make it any size. So we need category or tools in that category. And the next category then is working the wood itself. So cutting the dovetails, cutting out our joints, cutting rebates, dados, all that kind of stuff. So what tools we're going to need in that category. So we're going to fill to put tools in each of these three categories, the bare essentials that we will need. And by the end of this video, Anybody watching this who wants to get into woodworking should be able to get into woodworking. Now, I'm not going to go super in-depth into all these tools. I'm not going to tell you the whys and what fars or how they're used. The video would be hours long. I'm just going to put tools in each of these categories that will get you started. And there's plenty of resources online. I'll show you a couple of books that I really like at the end of this video that will get you on your way. So let's jump in. Marking and measuring. Okay, let's jump in, marking and measuring then. And we're going to keep this absolutely as basic as possible, like I said. So, number one thing we have an option of a marking knife or a pencil. Now, we don't have a budget for a marking knife, so we're not going to use one. This is a nice to have, it is not a have to have. A good, sharp pencil is perfect. It's all you need to mark out your timber. It would be nice if you can get yourself a marking knife, you can be more accurate, you can create things like knife walls and things like that. But like I say, we're on a super tight budget, so we're going to set the marking knife aside for now, and we're going to start with a pencil. So, one pencil. We want something to keep that pencil sharp because the sharper it is, the more accurate we can be with our lines. So a topper, to pencil sharpener, to sharpen that pencil. Next thing up, we want a marking gauge. Now, there's loads of different types of marking gauges on the market. I recommend you go with the wheel type, with the cutter, the cutter wheel. You can go across the grain and you can go with the grain. This one is made by Veritas, but you can get ones that are made by Quang Sheng and other companies that are just as good and are not as expensive as this. Or you can go with the wooden block type ones, but you'll have to get yourself one with a pin and a blade. The pin for going with the grain and the blade for cutting across the grain. But this will do both. Again, could you get away without having a marking gauge? You absolutely could. You could use a ruler 
and a pencil and you could mark everything out accurately but this I think is an absolute essential piece of kit so we're going to include it. So pencil and marking gauge. Next up something to measure with. A nice simple measuring tape. This is a little small three meter measuring tape. It will do things that are much longer than my bench. We're starting out making little boxes and stuff. So for marking and measuring and uh, dimensioning stuff, all we need is a measuring tape. Now, steel rulers are great. They're absolutely a fantastic bit of kit. I have a bunch of them for woodworking if you can get your hands on some steel rulers, especially the laser etched ones that you can drop the top tip of the pencil into each of those marks and be super accurate. Great if you can afford that. If you can't, all you need is a little measuring tape. Nice and simple. That will measure everything you need to measure. So, next up, squares. Okay, for our squares, we're gonna keep this nice and simple again. Now, squares are an absolute essential part of our marking and measuring category. We can't get away from them. You're gonna to need to be able to square lines across your boards. You're gonna to need to be able to check that your boards are actually square. These things are essential, especially for dimensioning timber. So, things like engineer squares are fantastic. They're highly accurate. Um, there are two set tolerances, so there's A class, there's B class, and then um, there's higher classes. There's loads of brands on the market. You can spend as much as you want on these things. They can get super expensive or they can get really cheap. We're not machinists, we're woodworkers, we're hobbyist woodworkers, is who I'm hopefully talking to right now. So they don't have to be super accurate. There are cheaper versions of this, but these aren't in our budget, so we we'll stay away from them. We're gonna look at a nice, humble, combination square. It does 45s and it does things at 90 degrees and you can check that everything is a square. It also has a built-in steel ruler which is nice. You can get Stanley or many other different types of makes. Um, a nice Stanley one for in around 20 euros, 25 bucks, whatever, you know, 15 pounds sterling. That will get you woodworking. It will be accurate enough for everything you need to do. It has, like I say, a 90 degree and a 45 degree and a built-in steel ruler. Next up, we want, want a sliding bevel. Now, we're gonna be doing more angles than 45 and 90, so we wanna be able to set angles and we wanna be able to mark dovetails. We are not gonna spend any money on dovetail markers. They are nice to have, they're great if you have the extra budget, they make things so much easier, but we don't have the budget for it, so we're gonna do all our dovetail marking with our uh, sliding bevel. We can set this to any angle we want. You can get a board, you can do all your ratios on the board, and you can set this guy. So you can do your one and eight or your one and six for your dovetails and any other angle that you want to do in between. So an essential bit of kit. That there is the entirety of everything we need to mark and measure for woodworking. Now, there will obviously be loads of stuff not included in that that you would love to absolutely have, but we don't have the money for it. So we want to start woodworking. This is all we need. Okay, on to category number two, and this is dimensioning and preparing stock. We're gonna to have to take some sort of lumber and get it to the correct size and dimensions that we need to make our project. Whether you buy rough cut stuff or pre-prepared stuff. If you buy the rough cut stuff, it will save you a bit of money, but it's a lot more elbow grease. If you buy the pre-prepared stuff, you're gonna pay a little bit more for it, but at least it's all dimensioned true and square. Most carpentry stores will sell pre-dimensioned packs of timber, small boards that you can use in projects. I recommend you go down that road. It will take a lot of the headache out of it when you're starting out and it'll get you straight into the woodworking. But if you want to prepare your own timber, you can do that with hand tools as well and it will save you a little bit more money to buy rough cut stuff. It's cheaper that way. So let's jump in. We're gonna need some saws. We have to cut our wood, there's no getting around it. So set of Japanese hand saws I reckon is the way to go. And why Japanese hand saws? Well, they're easy to use. Um, they're nice and simple, they're really effective, and the good thing about them is they are a lot less expensive to get a good set of Japanese hand saws than to buy a set of Western saws. They're very, very cost effective. So what we have here to start off with is the Ryoba saw. This is a double-sided saw. It is a cross-cut and a rip saw all in one. So you're getting two saws for the price of one, and it's a flush-cut saw as well. You can see it's very, very flexible, so it's easy to flush off materials with this. We have the Kataba saw, which is a cross-cut saw. Then we have the Dazuki saw, which is a dovetail saw. So you can see it has the spine on it there to keep that blade nice and straight. And then we have a small flush cut saw. This all comes part of the set. I don't know the Japanese name for the small flush cut saw. I'm not gonna try and pronounce it. So there you go, that's four saws. Now, let's assume we don't have the budget to buy that set. We only want two saws. So we're gonna get, for our cutting, we're gonna get the Ryoba saw, which gives us a cross cut saw and a rip saw and a dazuki saw, which is our dovetail saw, which will work for all most of our fine joints. So that's our two saws. 
Okay, next up in the dimensioning and preparing stock, we're going to need a hand plane. We're going to need some sort of hand planes and there's only one to go for if you can only have one and that's a jack plane and I recommend getting a low angle jack plane. This particular one, as loads of you guys will have heard, heard me say it in my videos before, this is a Lyle Nielsen jack plane. Now you do not have to spend the money on a Lyle Nielsen jack plane. If you do have that kind of money in your budget, you probably have um, money for a lot more tools than this. But Quang Sheng make a good one. If you're in America, Wood River make a good one. You could get the Axminster Ryder one. That will get you working fast. You can even look to pick up a second hand low angled jack planes online. Now why a jack plane? Well, it's called a jack plane for a reason. It means it's the jack of all trades. I mean, you can do a little bit of everything with it. Does it do everything? brilliantly no but it does everything okay and good enough and the low angle one has a nice bevel up blade so you can work end grain so you can use it with your shooting board for truing up all your miters for truing up end grain for squaring stock you're doing everything by hand so it's nice to have a low angle plane that can plane end grain and you can buy additional blades so get yourself a couple of different blades for it. They will come usually with a 25 degree bevel on it. You can get a 35, 38 degree and a 50 degree bevel and turn it into a high angled plane for doing uh, difficult grains. Now stay away from difficult grains when you're starting out. Just stay to nice easy timber like pine, ash, maybe some sort of maple that's not too highly figured. Um, Sapili is nice to work as well. There's a few different woods, but again, it's gonna be trial and error and you'll see what you like yourself. So we can dimension timber one of these. I flattened this entire work top and this is nearly, it's, uh, it's almost eight by four. And I flattened the entire thing just using this one plane. So we can dimension our boards, we can square our boards, we can use it as a jointer and we can use it as a smoother. And if you get yourself three different types of um, blades, 25 degree, say a 38 degree and a 50 degree blade, it will do absolutely everything you need a plane to do and it will work really well with your shooting board as well. So that's a low angle jack plane. This is a Lion Nielsen one. If you have the money, go with one of these, go with a Veritas. If you don't have the budget, step down, go with a Quang Sheng, a Wood River, or maybe an Axminster Ryder plane. So that's all we need to dimension and prepare our stock. Two saws and a plane. Let's move on. Okay, on to category number three, and this is our final category, and this is working the wood itself. Now, there's an absolute myriad of tools that we could fit into this thing from rebate, or if you're in America, rabbit planes, shoulder planes, we could have chisel planes, router planes, plow planes, cabin makers chisels, butt chisels, mortise chisels, so just, it's an endless amount of stuff. Forget all that, we don't know how to use it, and we can't afford it, so we're not using it. So we're gonna get ourselves a nice set of chisels, Six chisels will do you. So if you want to go from like a three mil chisel up to a 25 mil chisel, or if it's an imperial, an eight inch chisel up to an inch chisel, get a set of six, get yourself a set of bevel edge chisels and start woodworking away. So I'll show you the chisels I use. So these are my set of Ashley Oils chisels. I got these from Workshop Heaven. These are a set of cabinet makers chisels. They are a bevel edge chisel. They go down to almost a fine point, but they have a slight side on them. You can get de dedicated dovetail chisels that go down to an absolute fine point. That's almost like a blade on the side of that chisel. You don't need them. Get yourself a set of cabinet makers or bevel edge chisels. Um, you will be able to get into the corners of those dovetails. Just be careful if you're using a bigger size chisel, you might bruise the edge, just step down a size chisel. You can still dovetail with all these, you can mortise with these, as long as you're not hammering them too hard. You're not gonna be doing too big a project, so these set of chisels are ideal. They're not super expensive, they're not extremely cheap, they're kind of a mid-price level chisel. They're the ones I use and I recommend them. They come hand flattened and pre-flattened and you can buy the set of six, like I say, which goes from a three mil up to a 25 mil and you're covered to do almost everything you need to do. Add to the category then our jack plane and our two saws and all we need then to finish it off is a mallet. You can either make your own one or buy one and we can make boxes like this or like this, something like that Japanese style toolbox or you can do your dovetails, either your mitre dovetails, standard dovetails, inlay dovetails. That's all the tools you need, including which are marking, marking and measuring, and you are now woodworking. Now, if you can't afford a set of Ashley Oils chisels or a set of mid-price chisels, there's cheaper chisels, and I'll show you the ones I use all the time. Okay, so a nice, super cheap set of chisels. These are Stanley 5002s. You can buy these in a set of three or four, or you can get a set of six, I believe. 40, between 40 and 60 euros. I, for a number of years, only had these. 
orking in my garden shed and I made some lovely stuff including the towers with only these. These are a bevel edge chisel. Now they will be called bevel edge chisel but they still have a slab side so they're fairly still thick in the side so you can actually use these as a mortise chisel as well no problem. There's a good few videos on how to um, cut mortises with bevel edge chisels. I recommend Paul Sellers watch him make his workbench he'll show you a great technique for knocking out mortises with these and it's extremely quick and easy. You don't need a dedicated mortise chisel to do that. Like I say with all these hand tools you can do anything as long as you're prepared to use your head and put in a little bit of extra work you can get away with it. These ones will take a razor sharp edge and are easy to sharpen. They don't hold an edge um, as good as the Ashley Oil ones but they're a hell of a lot cheaper but still it's not bad steel. You can flatten the back of them, you can put a razor sharp edge on them and you can woodwork away. So there you go in around 40 euros, 40 dollars, 45 dollars, a cheap set of Stanley bevel edge chisels and um, we're away for slates as they say. Okay, there we go. That concludes category number three, believe it or not. That's all the tools we need to work the timber. And you can do rebates and dados with chisels, no problem. I am building this cabinet completely with hand tools and all the dados for the shelves and the rebates are all done with just the saws and the chisels. Again, there's loads of resources online or even on YouTube to show you the techniques and how you do all that stuff just using saws and chisels. You can absolutely do it and you can be absolutely accurate so long as you keep a razor sharp edge on that chisel and keep the bottom of it perfectly flat. It will function as a rebate plane, a shoulder plane for taking out dados. You can use it as a almost like a router plane as well. Just It's all down to technique and how you use the tools. So that's the bare minimum we need to get away with. Now there's another little category that we have to talk about that is sharpening our tools. So we're going to need some way of keeping our tools sharp, our chisels and our plain blade. Without that we can't really woodwork. You can't work with tools that are not sharp and sharp is not sharp enough when it comes to woodworking. So I'll show you what I use and then I'll give you a cheaper option. Works perfectly fine. I used it for years and I got great results with it. So let's jump in. Right, on to sharpening. There's no way around it. We're going to need some way of sharpening our tools. We have to keep our chisels and our plain blades sharp. You're going to need a sharpening system. I use the scary sharp sharpening system from Workshop Heaven which is just a piece of flow gas with 3M micro finishing film all different grits and it's on a nice piece of leather here too. It's easy to use and it is nice flat and accurate. The tape lasts a long time and you get super fine results and there's no need for a leather strop afterwards. In conjunction with that then I use the Veritas honing guide system. This just allows me to get consistent edges. It's a little bit fiddly to set up but once you get used to it um, it's nice and easy to use and it keeps all your plain blades and all your chisels to a consistent edge and it's easy to put a secondary bevel on it if you so choose. A little bit on the expensive side to buy this with this but that's not how I started out. I started out with a nice simple diamond stone. This is a relatively cheap one. It's a 400 grit and a 1000 grit and a leather strop that I made from a leather belt which I cut and stuck the two pieces of the belt together, stuck it to a piece of a uh, 4x2 or actually it's 3x2 um, timber and that's it. That's all I used and I hand sharpened everything. I got pretty okay results. I didn't get consistent results. If you're starting out and you're trying to hand sharpen, um, I don't recommend it. There's loads of honing guides on the market. If you can stretch to get a good one like the Veritas one, you won't be disappointed but there's cheaper roller type ones on the market. They don't catch the chisels um, too good. This one has a two different types of clamps, one for the chisels, one for the plain blades. That's why I recommend it. It's a little bit up there in the budget wise, but if you want to practice your hand sharpening, Rob Cosman, um, he sharpens all his tools by hand. He gets amazing results. So I'm not going to tell that man that he's wrong to do it like that. I used to sharpen mine by hand and I just started using a honing guide. I may go back to sharpening tools by hand at some stage, but if you want to do that, like I say, a nice cheap diamond stone with a 1000 grit and 400 grit is all you need in conjunction with a leather strop, a bit of um, polishing paste, um, auto saw, any of those will work with your leather strop and you will get razor sharp results. So that's it, sharpening, nice and simple. Okay, let's quickly talk about workbenches. You're going to need some hard, so solid, relatively flat surface to do all your woodworking on top of. Do you need a workbench this size? Absolutely not. I have a complete build series on a miniature workbench. You can do almost all your hand tool woodworking that you need to do on top of that little bench. And that'll fit in any apartment, any room in any house, um, any garden shed or any corner of any garage. Do you even need a voice? No, you don't. You can get yourself a set of hole fasts 
that will clamp anything to anything. You can set up any kind of blocks that you want. You can hold blocks in front of your piece, behind your piece if you want to plane your piece. You can put blocks on top of your piece if you don't want to mark your piece. These things get a super strong grip. It's only one belt of a hammer to tighten them and a belt of a hammer to loosen them. They will replace any voice. They've been around for hundreds of years. So yeah, nice, simple and easy to use. So I recommend a set of hold fasts a nice hard flat worktop, drill a few holes in it and you can use your hold fast with it no problem. That takes care of your workbench, nice and easy. Now once you get yourself set up with all those tools you are ready to go and I have complete build series on all the jigs and stuff that you can make and you will be able to make every single one of them with the tools that I've just shown you. You'll be able to build yourself a all wood moxon voice if you so need one. I have an all timber camlock leg voice. I have a build series on the workbench, a smaller version of the workbench, this miniature workbench, shooting boards, I have bench hooks, mallets, even if you wanted to build yourself a nice rebate plane that takes a chisel, you can build what they call a poor man's rebate plane. It works really, really well, has a fence on it and all. So you can start now to build your own tools once you get those few hand tools and the sky's the limit. You can start woodworking and you can start building from there. Now, I'll give you a look at a couple of books I recommend. Okay, two books I recommend starting if you're starting out. This is The Complete Guide to Joint Making by John Buller. It covers just about every single woodworking joint that there is, how to cut it with hand tools and how to cut it with power tools. Fully illustrated, talks you through every single one of them. It's a nice book, I really enjoy it. And it's a great way to start woodworking and start practicing your joints. Get yourself some prepared point, nice and cheap, and start making all the joints in this. It's a great way to practice and uh, it'll get you going. And with all the tools I've just shown you, that's all you need. And and they're all in this book as well. Next up is the Collins Complete Woodworkers Manual. I really enjoyed this one. This is like an encyclopedia for woodworkers. It has all the tree species from around the world where you can find them, all the different types of wood that you get from those tree species, the grain types. It takes you through manufactured timber products, all the different grades of plywood, how plywood is made, MDF, all that kind of stuff. All the woodworking hand tools and all the woodworking power tools. Now the power tools are getting a little bit dated, but they're still more or less the same as the power tools that are around today. So all the take techniques and everything are the exact same and like I say it's an encyclopedia for woodworkers. I really enjoyed it and uh, yeah there you go that's two books to get you started. Right there we go hopefully you went some of the way to answering some of your questions about what tools do you need to start woodworking. We try to narrow it down into a scenario where you don't have much money you want to do some hand tool woodworking you don't have much space so what do I recommend? Well these are all the tools in front of me now that you need to start woodworking. You don't need anything else. Money should not be a barrier to entry to this trade or this uh, hobby I should say. It is an expensive hobby to get into. The sky's the limit on what you can spend and how expensive the tools are that you buy. There are planes out there that are up to 10 grand crazy money it's it, it does become a very elitist at some level but at a basic level like this you can make some beautiful stuff from very very simple tools and that's really all you need from marking and measuring to preparing stock to actually working the timber everything that you have in front of you is uh, all you really need now it's probably going to be a controversial video maybe you guys have different opinions let me know in the comments below what you think if you feel like i'm absolutely missing something or something that you would absolutely have to have that you would add to this list be sure and comment below let's start a discussion on this but i think as a basic set of tools to get going on woodworking that's really all you need so get out there and start woodworking now if you've liked this video don't forget to hit the thumbs up if you're new here hit subscribe i have loads of videos on all these tools i have how to build your own workbench how to make your own moxon voice how to build your own leg voice i have videos on how to build all your own jigs, how to build all your own tools. They are all there in the description, so be sure and check them out. And like I say, comments and questions below, I will get back to you, and hopefully this has answered the question of what tools do I need to start woodworking. There you go, guys. Take it easy. I shall see you in the next one.